Happy Valentine's Day, all my loves and lovers. We all have different uh, feelings about Valentine's. I wanted to pop in today um, as your Valentine fairy to give you a Valentine message, okay? So, let's dive in. You know the phrase, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all? I feel like that should really be applied to ourselves first, whether you believe in manifestation or not. I think we can all agree that words hold power, although I don't think any human language can fully encapsulate or define a word or a thing or thought or feeling, the power of what we say remains. The older I get, the more proof I have that backs the notion, if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. So then, of course, we see it's not just the words we say, but also what we think. Perhaps that is even more powerful. What you say and specifically what you believe creates your truth. And your truth defines your reality. You are deserving of a beautiful life and that begins with you. Is self-love the answer to all our problems? No, but maybe yes. What parts of you are needing more love? How can you actively show yourself love every day? Because you are the love of your life. Nobody can complete you. You are already a whole person. And yeah, you're not perfect, nobody is. Actually, everybody is imperfect. It's something we all have in common. And you know, I hate the phrase, nobody can love you until you love yourself. Actually, I think that's garbage. I think, if anything, we don't see how we are loved or how much we're loved until we can love ourselves or are like genuinely trying. Not that we are incapable of being loved. I always say I knew I was in love with Adam when I fell in love with, with myself and with life. I looked up and around me and noticed who was with me and around me while I was loving life. And it was my best friend, my partner, the person who I feel the most comfortable making mistakes around, the person I want to come with me to every event. It was Adam. I loved my life. I loved who I was becoming. And I loved Adam. And as much as I adore him, he doesn't complete me. We are whole without each other, but yeah. Life is real, real sweet with him. But I didn't always have Adam. I definitely had my fair share of not Adams. I was once even engaged to someone else, and I've experienced heartbreak. Sometimes that heartbreak was because of a failed romantic relationship, but some of the heartbreak had nothing to do with that kind of love or that kind of relationship. Some of my biggest heartbreaks, Adam actually got front row seats to. It had nothing to do with him and everything to do with everything else. Broken hearts are normal. There may be times where your heart feels like it's broken into a million pieces. And when that happens, it's best to just feel the weight of that sadness. Cause true heartbreak really doesn't leave you the same. Understanding there's no real going back to the way you used to be before the heartbreak is, it's like salt in the wound, but also somehow simultaneously comforting. When something in us breaks, we learn to live with the change. We can't move on like it didn't happen. Because even if you try to convince your mind and your emotions that you're fine, when it is not, your body will remind you. When we don't allow ourselves to face the reality, to speak our truth and feel the depths of our emotions, our bodies become sick. Look, I can't make claims, but I find it interesting that I developed a neck tumor in the saddest time of my life, during the hardest time of my life. For years, I didn't share my story and I didn't tell my truth. I protected the peace more than my own sanity. And as we all know, to me, which was the loving nickname I gave my tumor, is gone now. It was that final piece of that season of grief. Again, I, I can't make claims, but I do find it interesting, the connection between our body and our mental state. And if you're in a season of grief, I encourage you to speak it out loud, whether it's to a friend or a therapist, which is great, or maybe you're not ready to say it out loud to a person yet. This is what I did. Uh, I set up my phone and I recorded myself. Some of the things I actually put online and some a lot of the things I didn't. So consider writing questions, like interview questions for yourself and try to answer them as honestly as possible. And then if you're able, get in your body, go for a walk, dance in your kitchen, give yourself a foot rub or simply just focus on your breath. Because if we aren't careful, Grief can get stuck in our bodies and make us sick long after the season of grief is over. And today, if your heart is broken, I wanna remind you it's because you were brave. You took a risk of vulnerability, something we can't avoid if we want to live a life of joy. Taking the risk of making yourself vulnerable for the sake of a beautiful, joyous life is the same risk we take with loving somebody 
or loving something because that risk is heartbreak. When we love, we put ourselves on the line, no matter what it is we're loving, whether it's a big type of love or a love that now seems far off. And is it worth it? Without question, yes. I think love is like a tree. As we go through life, we develop more rings, just like a tree each year. I don't think we necessarily stop loving our stuffy from childhood or our first crush or our friends from college, but as we continue to grow and expand and go through life, so does our love. It expands. The love we have for those things doesn't go away or diminish, but our rings of love are getting wider. And we wouldn't and couldn't love the things that we love today in the same way if we didn't have those first 50 rings. So maybe we love things more than we did then, but that's because we can only love as much as we're capable. And maybe with each year that passes, we are able to expand our hearts to love a little more and love a little deeper. Love doesn't go away, we just develop more rings. I don't know how you're feeling this Valentine's, but I hope you found this helpful. If you are feeling great and in love, I'm so happy for you. If you're feeling sad and broken, I've been there too. You are not alone. I hope you do something to show yourself a little love today. Love you guys. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.